color prejudice in South Africa, the caste prejudice in India, and the race prejudice in the United States. They all kind of have a similar... Um, they are. They do have a similar, you, similar, you know, uh, uh, foundation. Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm trying to think of the word. They all were similar in many ways. Yeah. And so uh, I just, you know, uh, talked, you know, kind of uh, gave expression to my thoughts. And I said, wouldn't it be fascinating to do this kind of study? And she said, well, would you like to do it? I said, yes, I would like to do it, but I don't have the uh, money to come to uh, to the United States and do this uh, study. And uh, she, you know, we left it at that, and she went back. And then some months later, I got a letter from the uh, University of Mississippi offering me a fellowship to come there and uh, do this study. Mm. And okay. And then we came here in 1984, accepting that fellowship. But uh, before we landed here, President Reagan had cut all the educational funds, and my fellowship went along with that. Oh. And so I was told that I didn't have a fellowship and that, uh, you know, I had to go back again. And so I went back, and that was a, a tremendous blow because I had invested everything I had in buying the tickets for Sunanda and me to come here. Oh. And uh, so, and I had left my job and, and everything, and so I had to go back and, uh, you know, start all over again. Mm. And uh, I thought, you know, that was going to be a big setback. But... Um, uh, you know, I uh, in about a year and a half later, uh, or maybe, it, uh, yeah, it was in 87, uh, three years later, mm -hmm. I got a letter from the University of Mississippi again saying that the fellowship was reinstated and that uh, we could come. And mm, but but I think you might be a little bit afraid to trust them after the first time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so uh, then I told them, you know, I said, you better be, send me the ticket money because I'm not going to pay out of my pocket for it. Yeah. And uh, so they they sent the tickets, and uh, and that's how we came here. And, well, when I came, and, and there was a lot of press publicity, uh, you know, in locally, uh, and uh, people came to know about me and uh, my... Uh, connection with Gandhi and so on and so um, people just started inviting me to come and speak about him and, and about his philosophy mm -hmm. and I realized that there was a lot of interest in uh, in this philosophy and uh, in his life so why not uh, start an institute and teach and so we uh, did started that and, and Started teaching this. Is that uh, when you started your uh, nonviolence association, or did it happen after you got to Memphis? Yeah, the Gandhi uh, Foundation. That was after I came to Memphis. Yeah, that's okay. But in those early days in Mississippi, you didn't have a foundation. No, in the early days, yeah. I didn't have. Uh, you know, it came about uh, only in 19. I started thinking about it in the end of 1988. Uh, yeah, and um, then it took me some time to plan and talk to people, and uh, and then I found many roadblocks, and I had to overcome those blocks, and uh, then find the funding for it, and then you know by ninety one, mid ninety one, June of ninety one, we uh, had some money, and uh, the Christian Brothers University offered us hospitality. And things kind of fell into place, and uh, it mm -hmm. became possible to start the institute. And that's where your uh, the Gandhi Foundation for Nonviolence is uh, headquarters now. There at the Christian University, isn't it? Christian right. Brothers University. Uh, they, yeah, we they gave us hospitality, uh, but we were independent, so we had to work uh, and find our own funding and do our own programs and so on. 
Mm-hmm. So, um, yeah, but, uh, you know, their contribution of giving us a home to live in and, uh, and um, office on the campus was a major contribution. Mm-hmm. And, and then... Uh, do you want to tell people what the foundation is? So yeah, they would know is, what it is uh, doing? Uh, well, it's a kind of informal teaching foundation. Uh, I thought that uh, I need to share with the rest of the world uh, the lessons that I learned from grandfather and uh, and hopefully uh, help them understand uh, you know how to deal with the problems in life. Yeah. So. Uh, uh, this was uh, uh, initially I wanted it to be a, uh, a regular teaching establishment where we would offer courses in uh, nonviolence, but uh, the university uh, wouldn't allow me to teach because uh, I don't have a doctorate, and and uh, so we had to decide to um, teach informally, uh-huh. and uh, you know through seminars, workshops, lectures, conferences, and so on. And I think in a way it worked out better this way because uh, this way I was able to reach out to many more people than I would have been if I had a credit course. Yes, uh, this way I would you be had the freedom this... to go where you wanted to go. Yeah. And where you were invited to go. Right. Mm-hmm. If I had a credit course, then I would be restricted only to the students who signed up for it. Oh, that's true. Uh-huh. But this way now I can go everywhere and and. And you do to... travel all over the world. Oh yes, I do. It's become so much now that I have to turn down many invitations. Yes, and because I know I travel painful. too, and after a while, those long plane trips they get to be very difficult. Oh yes, they do. I think you told me one time, did you go to Yugoslavia and those areas right when they were the fighting was first starting? Was that correct? Back in no, I went to Lithuania. Okay, I and thought there were some places that where the fighting was going on that you had gone there. Uh, Back no, a few this years was ago. after the Soviet Union broke up. Uh-huh. There was no fighting, but... Uh, I thought it was somewhere you know, where they were having the violence was happening at that time. No. Okay, no, I that was uh, in that. Palestine where I went in 2004. Yeah. Um, there was a lot of, uh, you know, that continuous fighting uh-huh. there between. Because I think it's very difficult to go somewhere where the violence is occurring and they yeah. try to talk about non yeah. violence. Mm. You know? Hmm. But anyway, right now you are still traveling and trying to spread this information. Yes, it is. I think, um, you know, there's something that I'm doing right and uh, and people are very uh, impressed and uh, so there are many, many invitations coming for me to go and uh, speak and, and conduct workshops and uh, so it's uh, in a way it's very uh, encouraging. And you do speak at a lot of colleges, too, don't you? I do. I do a lot of work with young people, and um, and that's very encouraging. But, uh, you know, when well, you're getting what about old... People, you do accept donations and things to, your, to the foundation, don't yes, you? Yes, I do. Um, you know, we have various categories of donations. We have a website, GandhiInstitute.org. Uh, would you say that again? GandhiInstitute.org. They go on that website, GandhiInstitute.org. They'll find yeah. all everything about the your foundation and right. They can doing. learn everything about it, and they can uh, also make donations or buy books or whatever. Uh huh. Okay. And you have written some other books, too. So, yes, I have. The most recent has been The Legacy of Love, uh, which is uh, all the lessons that I learned from Grandfather, which taught <laughs> me his philosophy of nonviolence. So you are still doing a lot of work, very oh, active. Yes. yes, I am. It's just the overseas flight that you're, <laughs> you're right. not as uh, anxious yeah. to do anymore. <laughs> okay. mm. 
Well, that's why I'm really glad that you are coming down to Arkansas for our conference next week. Yes, I'm looking forward to that. And, uh, and you'll be doing a two-hour talk, and you said it's uh, going to be on the topic of what you learned from your grandfather? Right. It's probably based on that book, isn't it? Yeah, it'll be based on the book Legacy of Love. Uh-huh. And uh, it's all about what he taught me and and how it has affected my life. And, and especially what... Uh, what he really meant by the philosophy of nonviolence. Uh-huh. And I found over the years that people have a very limited understanding of that philosophy, and they you generally think that it it's about pacifism and it's about not using physical force and not fighting and so on. And that's only a small part of it. Oh, what his uh, philosophy was, uh, you know, it's about. Uh, our uh, re- re- relationships with each other, mm-hmm. um, you know, and and many other aspects that uh, we need to understand. You know, we we kind of concentrate on uh, resolving conflicts, uh, and and the tragedy is that we wait for a conflict to occur and then we try to find a solution to that conflict. Mm. But we have seldom, if ever, paid any attention to. Why did that conflict take take place, and how can we avoid uh, such conflicts in the future? Yes, to stop it before it happens. Yeah, and and so uh, I think the time has come when we need to pay more attention to why do we have to face all these conflicts in mm-hmm. uh, in uh, advanced it's society. To stop it before it happens. Exactly. Okay. Well, I'm watching the clock because I have to stop at the five minutes before the hour. Mm-hmm. So they'll be having commercials and things later when this call goes uh, syndicated. Right. But um, I do want to remind people again that uh, Arun will be speaking at the conference here in Fayetteville, Arkansas, next week, June 3rd and 4th. It's called the Transformation Conference. And if you want to know more information about the conference, Go on my website. My company is Ozark Mountain Publishing, but on the website it's abbreviated O Z A R K M T dot com. Ozark Mountain dot com M T. Or you can call our eight hundred number one eight hundred nine three five zero zero four five one eight hundred nine three five zero zero four five to find out more about the books and about the conference and all the other speakers. And Arun, I want to thank you very much for coming on tonight. I want to thank you for giving me this opportunity to uh, take my message to so many people around the world. This goes all over the world, and it also goes into the archives. And they say anyone can download these shows out of the archives free. Oh, that's wonderful. And they are telling me, the people that are emailing me said they are downloading these everywhere, and they play them in their cars. So it's reaching a lot of people that we never think it would. Mm-hmm. So that's very good. All right, but anyway, I want to thank you again and wish you good night, and I'll thank see you. you next week. Okay, thank you very much, and good night to you too. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. You have been listening to BBS Radio, a blogandservice.com production and a service to others endeavor. Thank you very much for tuning in to our radio program, and we wish you much peace and joy on your journey.